Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the three components of the brainstem and go through their function. All right, so to begin, when we look at the brain stem, it's made up of three parts, the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla. Now, above the brain stem sits the brain or the cerebrum itself. If I were to take off the two cerebral hemispheres, we're left with something called the diencephalon, which is basically the thalamus and hypothalamus and pineal gland. Underneath that is where we've got the brain stem. Now underneath the brain stem, or at least underneath the medulla or medulla oblongata, we've got the first part of the spinal cord, the cervical aspect. So the three parts are midbrain, pons, and medulla, also known as medulla oblongata. We're gonna go through the cranial nerves associated with the brain stem because a lot of their function is attributed to the cranial nerves. Now remember, there's 12 pairs of cranial nerves. These are nerves that enter the brain or brain stem and leave the brain and brain stem. The ones that enter are sensory, telling the brain and brain stem information about the surroundings or the body, and the information going out is motor, so telling it to do something or respond. The brain stem you may have heard being referred to as a lizard brain or an old brain, but in actual fact, it's more so involved when it comes to very basic, subconscious, autonomic, function, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. A lot of reflexes, things that we don't consciously control. Reflexes are when a sensory signal goes in and a motor signal immediately comes back out to respond to keep us alive in that moment. So we first need to look at the cranial nerves associated with the brain stem, so we can look at the function. All right, 12 pairs, but not all 12 enter and leave the brain stem. So we need to start first with the thalamus itself, and I'll tell you why very shortly, but the first cranial nerve associated with the thalamus is that of the optic nerve. And the optic nerve is the second cranial nerve and it's sensory. So if I draw an arrow going towards this central component, it's gonna be sensory. If an arrow going away, it's gonna be motor. All right? So optic nerve associated with the thalamus. Let's look at the midbrain. So the midbrain has two cranial nerves that you need to really be aware of. These cranial nerves are both motor nerves. The first one is gonna be oculomotor. And the ocular motor nerve is cranial nerve three. And then the second one is gonna be trochlea. And trochlea is cranial nerve four. All right, now let's move to the pons. The pons has one really important cranial nerve you need to be aware of, and that's gonna be the trigeminal nerve. And the trigeminal nerve is both sensory and motor. And that's cranial nerve five. Now, as we move to the bottom of the pons, so at the pons and then go into the pontomedullary junction, so that's the, the region between the pons and the medulla, and then the start of the medulla, we've got three cranial nerves we need to put in here. We've got the abducens, which is going to be motor, which is cranial nerve six, facial, which is both sensory and motor, which is cranial nerve seven, and vestibulocochlea, which is sensory. Which is cranial nerve eight. Now, once we get to the medulla itself, three really important cranial nerves you need to be aware of, aware of okay? First is glossopharyngeal. Now, glossopharyngeal is both sensory and motor. And glossopharyngeal is cranial nerve nine. Then we've got the vagus nerve, both sensory and motor. And this is cranial nerve 10. And then the last one we need to be aware of is the hypoglossal, which is a motor nerve. And that's cranial nerve 12. All right, we've missed out on two cranial nerves here, right? First of which is the olfactory. Olfactory sense of smell, it actually comes in higher, more at the brain. We haven't uh, looked at cranial nerve 11, which is gonna be the accessory nerve. You know, it plays a role in shrugging. This is more so associated with the cervical portion 
of the spinal cord. All right, now that we've drawn this up, we can now look at the functions of the brainstem. So let's start with the midbrain. Midbrain plays a really important role in a couple of reflexes associated with vision. So have a look. Ocular motor, motor movement of the eye. Trochlea, motor movement of the eye. So midbrain, really important role for the visual system. All right, two reflexes you need to know here. First is what we call the accommodation reflex. Now the accommodation reflex, so remember it's a reflex. So sensory in, motor out. The accommodation reflex is basically when you see an object and you focus on the object, right? Sensory in, motor out. The sensory nerve that's coming in is the optic nerve and the motor nerve coming out is the ocular motor nerve. Optic in, ocular motor out, that's the reflex for accommodation. The other one you need to be aware of here is the pupillary light reflex. Now the pupillary light reflex is where you shine a light at the pupil and both, just one, but both pupils constrict. Sensory in, motor out. The sensory in is optic again and the motor out is ocular motor again. So these are two really important reflexes associated with the midbrain. But another important point you need to be aware of with the midbrain is it contains the substantia nigra. Now, substantia nigra means black substance because it contains a pigment called melanin and it produces an important neurotransmitter called dopamine. So the substantia nigra contains part of what we call the dopaminergic system. Dopaminergic system. Now the dopaminergic system is really important when it comes to movement and behavior. Let's write that down. Movement and behavior. Now, when it comes to movement with the dopaminergic system, this has branches that go to the basal ganglia, okay? And it helps with initiating motor movement and smoothing out motor movement. Some individuals, these dopaminergic neurons die. If they die, it's hard to initiate motor movement and it's hard to smooth it out. And the resulting issue here is Parkinson's disease. These individuals can't start a movement very well and what happens is they have a resting tremor. All right, so this is the dopaminergic system, part of the substantia nigra. Oh, and the behavior plays a role in motivation and reward. Dopamine is really important in motivation and reward. So this is the midbrain. Now, let's have a look at the pons. When we look at the pons, we've got two important reflexes you need to know. First is the jaw jerk reflex. The jaw jerk reflex. Okay, jaw jerk reflex. This is where if you open your jaw, you stretch certain muscles such as the masseter, temporalis, medial pterygoid, and this sends a sensory signal in to tell the motor neuron coming out to close the jaw. So the sensory in is going to be the trigeminal nerve and the motor out is the trigeminal nerve. And this is the jaw jerk reflex. Another reflex you need to know that's mediated here at the pons is gonna be called the corneal blink reflex. Corneal blink reflex. And what happens here is if you were to rub the cornea, both eyes blink reflexively. This is because the sensory component is going to be trigeminal and the motor component to blink is facial. Sensory trigeminal, motor, facial coming out. That's the jaw jerk reflex, reflex and the corneal reflex. Now let's move down and have a look at, oh one more that we should be aware of at the pons, which is called the tensor tympanae and stapedius reflex. Tensor tympanae and stapedius reflex. This is where you hear a really loud sound. What happens is the tensor tympani and stapedius reflexively contract, and it means that any other incoming sound is dampened because you don't want to damage the cochlea. You don't want to damage the eardrum itself. So what's happening here is this. The sensory in is going to be vestibular cochlea. 
coming in, tells tensor tympanins to pedius to contract. That's motor. The motor that's coming out to do this is going to be the trigeminal. Vestibular cochlea coming in, trigeminal going out. All right, now let's look at the medulla. When we look at the medulla, there's a couple of important reflexes here. First thing we need to look at for the medulla is swallowing and gag reflex. The swallowing and gag reflex. Now, the sensory coming in is both glossopharyngeal and vagus, and the motor going out is both glossopharyngeal and vagus. And this is the same when it comes to the cough and sneeze reflex. Cough and sneeze reflex. Now, another important point for the medulla is this is the site of decussation for many neurons. So decussation is where a neuron crosses from one side to another. It may be this side to that side or that side to this side. They may be sensory neurons coming up. They may be motor neurons coming down. In actual fact, there is a group of sensory neurons that come up the same side, sign up at the medulla and go to the other side to go up to the thalamus. These neurons that take this pathway are neurons for fine touch, vibration, and proprioception. So fine touch, vibration, and proprioception. All right, this is called the dorsal column medial lumniscus pathway, going up, so sensory. Now sometimes there's motor neurons that come down and they cross at the medulla. They decussate here at the medulla. And these are motor neurons coming down. So that's another important point for the medulla. All right, last point I wanna finish with is that deep to the brainstem, there are some nuclei of some neurons that play really important functional roles. Now we don't know all of their roles, but we know some. Now, this deep system of neurons is called the reticular formation. And you're gonna have some nuclei sitting in the midbrain, you're gonna have some sitting in the pons, you're gonna have some sitting in the medulla. And like I said, it's called the reticular formation. Reticular formation. Now, the nuclei associated with the mid midbrain play a really important role for wakefulness, wakefulness and consciousness. So sleep-wake cycles, for example, circadian rhythm and consciousness. So damage to this particular area can result in individuals being unconscious. Those of both the pons and the medulla are associated with, so both the pons and medulla are associated with respiratory and cardiovascular basic function. This includes the rhythmicity of these systems, the tone of these systems, and how they basically work pons and medulla. Again, damage to these areas, damage basic respiratory function and basic cardiovascular function. So what we've got here is a general overview of the functions of the brainstem.